Let's start with the second set for the CSA paper two questions. Now the very first three questions talk about the questions from passage. This talks about tackling the problem of pollution in the cities, and sometimes it so happens we come up with certain suggestions, but it's actually just a quick response uh, to a problem, and it is not based on a long-term evidence or some finding. So it is actually not um, a viable source. So here it says arbitrary ban that uh, on the vehicles. that have passed the fitness test and periodic pollution tests are unfair what is needed is scientific and reliable information so here the answer would be the most logical reason is knee jerk reactions cannot solve the problem of pollution but we require an evidence based approach to have a more effective solution the next question for this time is based on corporate governance now the idea is corporate governance in improves the credibility but once we have a good Uh, credibility that would ensure that you have investments from international capital markets so international capital markets to have a good standing there there should be a good credibility and for that there should be a good corporate governance so here the correct answer would be c next question talks about uh the concept where elephants are considered as the keystone and since the elephant are the main species uh they this whole passage explains how they help in uh, actually benefiting the biodiversity so they eat plants fruits propagate defecate and then they provide nourishment to others help as a breeding ground for insects during the drought they also dig holes so this is therefore explaining that elephants are extremely important so b is the right option for this question coming next is a interesting problem here what you do is add up all these numbers so 9 plus 7 plus 10 gives you 26 so 2 plus 6 is 8 then you have 9 plus 11 plus 30 gives you 50 so 5 plus 0 is again 5 Eleven plus seventeen plus twenty-one gives you twenty-eight plus twenty-one, so uh, that is forty-nine. So four plus nine is thirteen. Then you have twenty-three plus four plus fifteen, that is nineteen plus twenty-three. So nineteen plus twenty-three gives you two one forty-two. So four plus two is six. So the correct answer here is six. Next question is: Let x be a positive integer such that Seven x plus ninety six is divisible by x. Now here x has to be a factor of ninety six, right? In order to be divisible uh, by x itself. So what are the factors of ninety six? How many factors you have? Twelve factors. What are those factors of ninety six? If you find out, it is one, two, three, four, uh, six, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty four, thirty two. Forty-eight and ninety-six, so twelve factors. So this x should be what? Nothing but twelve. So you have twelve as the right answer here. The next question is: If p, q, r, s are distinct single-digit positive numbers, what would be the greatest value? Now, if I bifurcate this, this would be twenty-three to ten. Now, when it is twenty-three, I can do. Uh, I cannot do a good uh, p plus q. When it is two to five, I can say it's fifteen into fifteen. Okay, so p plus q could be what? It would be nine plus six and seven plus eight, and therefore distinct digits and distinct numbers. The same cannot happen with others because it gives you an odd digit, and that's a real big number which cannot be further explained into a single digit number uh, when broken down as p q r s. So two twenty five becomes the right option. The next is number n is formed by writing nine for ninety nine times. What is the remainder if n is divided by thirteen? Any time you have nine, 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 you divide it by thirteen, you would universally get eleven, except for ninety-nine. So here the answer would be eleven. You can simply solve it and check it. The next is each digit of a nine-digit number is one. It is multiplied by one itself. So one, 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 one. One 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 one. So one two three four five six seven eight and nine. Okay. Now you square it. So how would you write it? It would be one two three four five six seven eight nine, and then start reducing it. So eight seven six five four three two one. Now you add all these digits, and you get the answer that is. Equal to eighty one. You can just solve it. Add all these. So one plus two plus three, so on till two plus one. So adding all these digits, 
you get the number as 81. Next here is another basic set questions which says in India segregation of municipal source uh, municipal waste is at source is very very rare. So we do not have recycling and most of our waste is like biodegradable coming from the food waste and that solid waste is uh, more than 50% uh, in terms of the, uh, the waste that is there and therefore biomethanation could be a good process. So based on the passage it does not neither talk about government or private sector so both the statements are incorrect so neither of them would be the answer here and then what best reflects the passage is segregation of municipal waste is the first step to ensure success to waste to energy so making sure if you want waste to energy plants then the waste should be properly segregated the next set of questions says that there is a huge claim on organic farming that it is good and it is more safe however there have been difficulties doing it at large scale uh, certain plants like datura and leaf spray have atropine and if not applied to the right dose they can affect the nervous system so uh, unfortunately how much and when to use is a very important aspect so what is spray how much where to use is important so based on this passage what assumption can be made Organic farming is inherently unsafe, we cannot say that, but farmers and consumers need to be educated, that's true. So we have two only as the right option. And what reflects the most logical statement out of it is that in India, if the farmers are guided properly, organic farming can get sustainable. So in order to make organic farming sustainable, farmers must be educated about it. So C is the right option. The next is the food consumption patterns have changed globally. We are now moving towards growing millets. Moreover, if we are doing monoculture, it can affect the, not only the food security, but also nutritional security, right? So dependence on only few crops would have negative consequences on the health, that's correct. And government policies regarding food planning must incorporate nutritional security, that's again correct. So two and three are the right options here, one and four are incorrect. So B is the correct option for this question. Coming next is, a box has a very interesting problem. 14 black balls, 20 blue, 26 green, 28 yellow, 36 red and 54 white. I add up all these first of all. 14 plus 20 plus 26 plus 28 plus 38 plus 54. This gives me 180. So in all I have 180 balls. Now the question is the smallest number n such that any n balls drawn from the box must contain one full group of at least one color. So there are six different colors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. If I take five balls out of that group i am ensure uh, if i keep five balls in the bag okay i am ensuring that at least one whole group is being selected right so at least one color is 175 would be the right statement here i repeat again when i am leaving five balls okay that means it could be one from black, one from blue, one from green, one from yellow, one from red. But still, I have one whole group that is there. So, 180 minus 5, that is 175 would be the right answer for this question. So, 1 is correct. The second is, smallest number M such that any M ball drawn from the box randomly must contain at least one ball of each color. Okay. So, that means 54 I take 38 I take 28 I take 26 I take 20 I take now this is how much this is 166 plus one ball of black now this ensures that at least one ball of each color would be there so 167 would be the correct answer for this question understand this is a very interesting problem so again both the statements here are correct in one question it is saying I have to uh, have how many balls so I leave one ball of each color and then I ensure that one whole group could be there right however in the second case I am drawing the maximum number of balls uh, so all the whites all the reds all the yellows and greens and blues and then uh, one black and then I can say yes at least one ball of each color would be present so both one and two would be the correct statement the next is if zero is written as 
a b c d e f and this is x y and z so z is written as c so p would be written as g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z right so p would be written as i leave two spaces and jump so s okay so it would start with s the next is o so i won't do that the next is c or d so r changing to u so r changing to u again leaving two spaces so a would be changing to d so again one cannot be the answer this would be the answer b is again common for all so i leave that i take the third uh, second last letter so after e it is h okay so again these two this can be ignored and finally r so r is to u so r is to u as we have already seen so d would be the right option so with every letter it is uh, two letters leave two letters and a third letter so third letter would be the sequence right the next question is the statements are given a is elder than b c is equal to d e is youngest okay so in the sequence e is youngest f is younger than d so f is younger than d and f is older than a so i can write it as and then complete my statement so all the statements would be required in order to reach to this conclusion so this is very very important now i cannot even leave this statement that e is youngest because if i don't know e is youngest then i don't know where to place e right so to determine the oldest i would require all the statements from the given statements very very simple if i remove this statement i cannot say who is the oldest okay because i know f is younger than d okay so f is younger than d is a correct way okay if that way is you take and if you try to remove this statement i don't take this statement into account but again then i cannot say who c or d is elder right so i have to take this statement also into account so that means i have to take all the five statements into account in order to answer this question saying that who is the eldest among the group so all five would be the right option the next is a question on blood relation so a and b are husband and wife okay a and b are a and b are married couples d is the father to c e is the son a and c are sisters so a is daughter and b uh, a is again daughter and c is again daughter so b is the husband now the relation between e to b i can say yes he is the son and um, sisters husband so brother in law relation but the question asking is asking which of following statements are sufficient so i must know that these are husband wife okay because i want to derive a relation between e and b now i also need to know e is the son of uh, d and a and c are sisters and c is the daughter of uh, c is the child of d so that means i need to know all the four statements in order to come to this conclusion so all the four would be the right option here the last question for this set choose the group which is different from others now here all the numbers are prime all the numbers are prime all the numbers are prime here 91 is not a prime number it is 13 into 7 is 91 okay so d becomes a different answer here so those were the next set of questions that we did for c set paper 2 will be coming up with further next set for c set soon stay tuned